Thanks for staying with us. So join us on the show is a politician, an architect, writer, designer, and activist. He'll be telling us why Lagosians should entrust him with their vote come 2023 and how he will govern the most populated, diverse state in Nigeria, Lagos State. Welcome with us, Mr. Gbadebo Rootsviva in the building. He's the governorship candidate for the Labour Party. You're Thank so you. so welcome to the Thank show, Thank you for sir. having me. Good to have you. You can join the conversation now calling 081-270-5367, You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Sir, so there's a lot of controversy somewhat with you because you're in PDP, you're supposed to be deputy governor candidate, and they moved you to Labour, they moved to Labour Party, mm -hmm. and you've been going around a bit, and I've, I've watched a few of your uh, interviews, and I, I know that um, you've been harping on the fact that you wanted to tap into the tourism potential of Lagos State, and I'd really like to discuss a bit on that, but let's start with why do you want to be governor of the state? Okay. Um, well, I contested for Senate in 2019, half of Lagos. Um, in that which party? PDP. Okay. Ikeja all the way to Badagri. And that gave me insights in the 125 wards that are in that half of Lagos, going door to door, meeting people, understanding the pains that people feel in Ojo, where, it, where a child in the riverine area has to go such long distances to get primary school, to get primary health care. And in understanding that and understanding that we now have an opportunity where young people have decided that it's time for politics to be something that they play a part in. It's time for a situation where you have a politics that's accountable, a politics that's not left to just the politicians anymore. And the idea that Lagos can be so much more. Lagos was once ranked one of the best cities to live in, 1966. It was ranked alongside states like Spain and you know, London. And now, for the last 10 years, it's been consistently ranked as one of the best places to live in the world. So, for me, bringing architecture to view, understanding how we can actually impact Lagos with good design, proper planning, systematic and structural planning, we can create a Lagos that works for everybody, mm. right? And that is my passion. That is my drive. I'm from Lagos. I'm, I'm an indigenous of Lagos. And, you know, like Plato says, you, you either choose to get involved or you complain about, about being ruled by people that are less than you. Mm. Yeah, so I wanted to... Um, I love the the ownership, you know, this is where I'm from, this is why I want to make it work. But we, we know that Lagos isn't really about, Lagos is more than Lagosian. That's of the course, truth. I agree. And Lagos has grown and expanded based on the fact that every other part of the country has come here, put in the work, and how are you approaching those other people as well? Because if you go to the Ojo, it's not, you're not really seeing a lot of Lagosians, you're seeing the Igbo people who have lived within that Ojo area, the trade fair area. If you go to some other parts, the river area, they are not, they are, they are Ijo people that have lived there. So how are you getting, going to get across to those that are not Yoruba people yeah. and are not Lagosians, but are also here and they feel like I was born here as well? Of course, I, I am the epitome of new Lagos. I'm from a very old Lagos family. My mother is from Abia State. My wife is from Anambra. So if you're talking about epitomizing what Lagos is, I'm the embodiment of it. And when you look at the number of votes I got in 2019, it was a reflection of that. Because all those axes you've mentioned, Amor, Dauphin, or Jaw, those are places that were my constituency. And those are people that came out and gave me those numbers. My mother was on Campecho with me, you know. It's also about empathy. It's about empathy. Being proud Lagosians, but also spending time in Port Harcourt, in Azumini mm. during Christmas, gives you a vast insight into human beings, into different cultures and different people, but to allow you to see more the commonalities that what separates them. So in relation to that, like I said, the idea of Lagos, which made it the commercial capital of the world, which made it in Abdiazikwe's political base, was that the indigenous of Lagos have a culture of welcoming, of acceptance, of live and let live, of if you are bringing excellence, if you are bringing positivity and you respect the land, you will thrive. There's an important culture that has come to Lagos State, and that's what we're trying to get away from and restore the original feeling of Lagos. So for me, the um, current governor of uh, Lagos State uh, may be a tough nut to crack in the sense that some Lagosians, or I've heard in some quarters that 
He has been very proactive. He actually listens. People make complaints and say, this is not working, that, not, that is not working. And before you understand what's happening, they are there. The people who are supposed to be doing the work are there. They are showing results. Do you think you stand the chance against someone who people are now beginning to see that this guy listens? Don't you think we should give him a second chance? Um, listen to what? To the cries of the people No, no, no. States. When you say the cries of people are people waking up at 4 a.m. to get to work for 8 and they're doing that, they've been constantly doing that for the last 20 years. The cries of poor are that they don't have water in their house, even though the state has collected so much money from the World Bank to be able to deliver portable water to people's houses. People are crying about that. People are crying because they are embarrassed by agros on the road every day, right? Even the bus drivers have now come out to complain. Those are cries that are not being listened to. There are people that are complaining about how people were treated during NSAs, how lights was turned off, right? Those are cries that are not being listened to. Um, you see, Lagos State has been run in a tokenist form for a very long time. There are things that are done to get the headlines. Lagos is working, Lagos is working. But millions of Lagosians are in Lagos, and they've normalized suffering. Mm -hmm. Because sitting, waking up at 4 a.m., not seeing your children before they go to school, right? Coming back at 12 p.m., right? There's so many... Who don't realize how many marriages have been broken because of just traffic in Lagos State? Let me let Nima jump in okay, here. So I, I'd like that um, when we talk about this administration and what it has done, let's give some credit where it is necessary. You mentioned the traffic, and you'll see construction as the bedrock of most of this. Eco Bridge presently suffered uh, an explosion. The Ministry of Works, Federal Ministry of Works, have come to say that that bridge has to go down or something has to be completely shut. I drove around that place and I saw the walk. So I'd love some, some um, credit where it is necessary. And where it is not necessary, please be free to say. Okay, so like I said, um, I don't believe in mediocrity. What has kept Nigeria where it is, where it should be one of the greatest um, countries in the black race, the black world, is mediocrity. We get a little token and we clap. Your bridge that you got, you could have got four of it. Because by default, Lagos operating at prices four times the World Bank benchmark for what a bridge should cost. And I give you an example for the Fallomore link, the Fallomore bridge, the I'll even call it a ramp that links to um, Uzumba. It was done at four times the World Bank benchmark price, right? And so many things like that. But even getting deeper into what you said, it's taken almost 23 years to get the blue line, right? You have the Lagos Ibadan rail, that's about 170 kilometers. That was done for about 1.5 billion, right? And we know that we need about 160, 160 kilometers of rail to make Lagos work and to get away from traffic so that you have a situation where even if you need to take that bridge down, it's okay because we can still move around Lagos. This thing has not been done. Barely 16 kilometers of rail has been done. The 160 kilometers was their plan. Barely 16, 16 kilometers have been done. The red line, the track, the infrastructure was laid by the federal government. Yes, they built stations around it, and I clap for that. But the fact of the matter is the main work and problems is how long does it take to put the rail infrastructure? Mm. How long does it take to dredge your waterways and pro provide proper embankment so that we can actually move properly by water and connect Lagos where we're supposed to be okay, connected? Now, let's talk about some of the things you want to do. I said before, I had read a few um, interviews where you were focusing on tourism. It says yeah. how much you want to tap into tourism in Lagos. I'd like to know how you the question that came to mind is the influx of people that come into Lagos every single day yeah. is a major strain on the media resources they have within the state. The government always complains of how difficult it is where you try to buy uh, amenities into maybe hospitals and then you have more people coming in using as many. How do you plan to work in Lagos when we have continuous influx of people all from all over the country coming to Lagos? Uh, two questions in one. Okay. So Lagos and um that's um, banned. Going all the way to Ghana is going to be a megapolis. The megapolis of the future is the fastest growing region in the world, mm -hmm. right? And there are many reasons <coughs> for this. Lagos was supposed to be the commercial capital of Nigeria. Where there's commerce, people will always come, right? So let's first understand that. Now, I'm going to link tourism, mm -hmm. and this is your second question about managing people. So to, for tourism to first to thrive, in a place. First, you must celebrate your culture, which we were talking about while the camera was off. Celebrate your culture. They must create infrastructure to allow for a quality of life in Lagos State. And that's why, as part of our manifesto, we are going to deliver the four rail lines, 
right, in four years. So ensuring that people can move properly to the state and then tackling security. Because you have a situation where <coughs> bus drivers are complaining about agrivals, people that are going to um, entering bus in the morning are complaining about agrivals. Architect is complaining about agrivals because when I'm doing construction on this side, there are people that come and make my, force my workers to down their tools. And then if you don't take care of them, problem because when the workers are leaving, they'll be harassed, mm -hmm. right? So the idea now will be, how do we manage? Because first of all, these people have been backed by the political status quo. That's where they get their confidence from, right? And this needs to be changed completely. We're going to work with them as stakeholders, to create a situation where they get skills that make them more employable and tie it into incentives for companies to settle in different local governments that make it self-sustaining, so urban renewal. And then now this brings us into tourism. So the local governments that have um, comparative advantages, so like Badagri, Ekpe, Ikorodu, they're close to the water, they have huge fishing communities, a um, lot of culture as well. Mm -hmm especially Badagri, so let's use Badagri. Um, we're, going to exp we're going to make sure that, for instance now, the blue line is stopping in Okokomaiko. It needs to go all the way down to Badagri, right? My father used to go to Badagri for weekends to visit the beaches. This needs to be restored. And then allow for, allow for even healthcare, right? To, a, a new healthcare teaching hospital to be located in Badagri. So you're also pulling people there, right? And then you now make that that um, division to now thrive, right? Because when you look at an industry, you allow people to come, be able to come there. Development now happens in that area, mm -hmm. right? So these are things that we'll do to allow for tourism to thrive. And then make Lego, aim to make Lagos State a 24-hour economy, right? Being a 24-hour economy is truly based on security. Mm -hmm. The moment you can go out at night, you know, mm -hmm. but then back to, back to your, fine, your question about um, a lot of people coming in. You see, Lagos State is the equivalent of what America is to Nigeria. Mm. Lagos State is pulling the best brains from all over Nigeria, mm. whether we like it or not. And Lagos State, the idea that they like to boast about, is coming from these people that are coming to Lagos. Mm. Now, the question is, how are these resources being managed? Trillions of Naira have been spent in this state in the last 20 years, and it does not tie into the development that we see in the state. Right? Because there's no transparency, there's no accountability in the government, the finances are opaque. Now, the moment we start to have a situation where this bridge costs one naira, and we are spending 95 naira, 95 costs one naira, we are spending 95 cobalt to do, because we even got a better deal. We are negotiating to achieve um, um, economies of scale. So we are negotiating with this construction company to, be able to achieve economies of scale so they can do four. And we are even doing it lower than the benchmark price. And we are beating a benchmark level of quality then we are managing our resources properly. Sure. And it will thrive, mm. right? Because again, people that are coming to Lagos are coming to work and most of them are Even those in the containers that come, life. the ones that come in containers and bicycles. Like I said, most of them. Most of them. Okay, most let me come to talk about you. Have a lot um, I, I really would like to talk about, you know, um, Nematical story today about the fact that water is covering more parts of Lagos. Lagos yes. is largely below sea level. Yes. What are your, what's your own manifesto towards, what, what's your plan towards helping to keep to cons nature? Yes. To conserve nature and combating climate change. That's a beautiful question. Um, so, Lagos State is surrounded by wetlands. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, because of the corruption in the system, developers are just allowed to sand fill any area. You see a lot of sand filling happening and properties are just rising up and down. Now, the problem is that your wetland area is your natural gutter in a place that is below sea level. So, normally your water goes there and stays. It's like a soccer way. Right? Now, when you sand fill it, water is being displaced. Now, unfortunately, Lagos State literally is run, in my opinion, for profit as opposed to for the people because you find that a lot of development is happening for the rich. A lot of sand filling is happening. That water must go somewhere. It is displaced and usually it's affecting the poor because there is no, there is no, okay, this is the eventual effect mm. that it's going to have. Mm. So we are going to go there and we are going to create embankments and dredge <laughs> the water properly. So when we sand fill, this part that's for the rich, water is not going to overflow the to places where they'll mm -hmm. be affecting the poor. So my manifesto, we, need to, we have a wetland protection policy okay. that is very sacrosanct to urban planning in Lagos State. You will no longer just be able to sand fill any and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Displace people, because you see, 
even if there's wetlands, you still find indigenous people living in those areas, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of them are displaced and there's no proper care for where they are going to, how they are going to survive after they leave. Mr. Survivor, your hands will be full in a mode of you, for instance. Yeah. So what exactly would you like to change when it comes to... Okay, let's pick a mode of because I live in a mode of him. What would you like to change? One of the things, if I were governor, that I would love to see change is the practice of the people when it comes to waste management. Oh, yes. And how they dump waste everywhere and anywhere. Yes. How would you run that area if you were you? Yeah, you guys are asking very nice questions. Very nice, I mean. <laughs> um, you see, we, we talk about waste management, but what I call what's going on in Lagos is Lagos State pick and dump. They are not managing waste. For waste to be managed properly, they must go through different routes. It must be upcycled, recycled. It's not, you're wasting waste when you're just creating landfills with it, yeah. right? So now, you must actually have local government autonomy, right? Lagos State recently voted against having local government autonomy. And I say this because when you have local government autonomy, you can now have visionary potential governors as your local government chairman. Now, I say this because proper waste management must be at a local level, right? So, there must be incentives that are coming directly to that local government that will incentivize them to make sure that their people are managing waste properly. And when I say manage waste, you want a situation where from the house, people are separating waste sticks and others. So the truck that is coming to pick organic waste is different from the truck coming to pick plastic waste. We must now open the entire system. We must depoliticize de it so that if you have a truck, you can get into the system in a very transparent, easy way. So that we I make up for... Question. This had a question. Yes, yeah, so um, I'd like you to tell us about um, your running mate and how you think um, or how you're able to canvass for votes in this coming election. What are some of the plans you have to get a lot of people to support your dream? Well, my running mate um, is an excellent woman, uh, Princess Oyefusi. She's a daughter of the late Ayogbore of Ikorodu. Um, she was central candidate in 2019 in Lagos East, and she got 40% of the votes in that election. Um, she, is, uh, she has training in business management. She's worked in city councils in England. So she has that sort of local government professionally run um, experience that um, she's going to bring to the table. She's also an international businesswoman as well. And she's a very deep-rooted grassroots politician, especially in the Lagos East Central District and really expanding across Lagos now. So what we are doing is the main aim in this election is to nurture and bring a whole new voter demographic to the polls. Right? Um, the current voter base has really been nurtured in the last 20 years by the ruling party. Mm. We are nurturing ours. And the people have decided that they are going to get involved. And we are making that possible. Let's talk about the, the House of Assembly and the construction, because if you do become governor, you're going to have a national House of Assembly probably possibly full of non-party uh, members. <laughs> and, um, if we, and, and because your party is not very popular in Lagos, I would say. Um, but if you become governor, how do you intend to function, especially with the House of Assembly that might not be from your party? And that's one. My part B of the question is, one, you talked about local government autonomy the other time. Yeah. Somebody was saying here that one of the reasons why Lagos State didn't pass that law was because of the fact that the, the government, the federal government only recognizes 20 lo local government while they're having 57. What are your thoughts on this local government autonomy? Do you agree with federal government that we should only have 20 local governments? Or do you agree when that show I just said that you should have that 57 local governments and 20 local governments and then other LCDAs? Yes. Okay, so I'll start from the last question you asked. Um, I believe that the closer power gets to the people, the better for the people, especially if that power is managed properly mm -hmm. and it's not an inefficient and expensive um, arm of government, yeah. right? So the federal government with the whole politics going on, I mean, APC promised us that when Lagos it aligns with the federal government, we would have 57 local governments, but that has not happened for whatever reason. So currently we have 20 local governments. For me, we work with what we have to get what we want. They already have a system going on where allocation comes to the one that is recognized by the federal and it is divided to the three, right? That forms the LCDAs, right? So I, I don't think that is a good enough reason to reject local government autonomy. Local <coughs> government autonomy would allow 
especially if you have visionary local government chairman, allow a lot of development to come to local government. The inner rules that mm -hmm. are plaguing, bad inner rules that are plaguing Lagos State will actually be done. And then the other question about assembly members. Um, by God's grace, when we form our government in 2023, it will be because we also won lots of assembly seats. And besides that, the whole conversation about value, we want to create value. Right? So I'm not, I, don't look, I, don't, I don't practice the politics of bitterness. The question is, I set the goals, I communicate the goals, and we work together to get those goals done and protect the interests of the people. And also, we'll be transparently <coughs> communicating with our people, create a lot of feedback loops. So in the people that are being encumbrances to good government, right, the people will know. It should not be an opaque system. Right? One of the things that we're going to do is we're going to have a radio show that is taking on a local government or an issue for a number of days in the week, and then I will come on last week and address it, right? So constant feedback loop. Mm -hmm. So if you, the state assembly member, want to be the thorn in the flesh of development in the state, your people will we'll know. know. Okay, so I have um, um, a question earlier. My question was talking about how to change the culture of waste dropping yeah. of the people of our mode of where I live. And also there's a question from there on how you deal, asking you now, how will you deal with the indiscriminate sitting of tank farms yeah. along the Jigu water side and uh, 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 containers terminal spread ar around that mode of view? Yes, it's a very big problem. And this has been consistent even when I ran in 2019, 2018. You have people coming home and just tankers, containers, containers, containers. So we're going to have to carry all stakeholders along and push for new rules, whether it's going to be incentivized by levies or taxes that will be imposed on them. But you must have a proper garage for your tankers if you are going to operate your tank farm. There must be a place where they park. It is no longer okay to take over our roads, right? And we'll also make sure that there are stiff consequences to people that are taking bribes, right, to ensure that those things happen. And first, there now needs to be, well, there was a call-up system that was settled in Apapa, but obviously that also broke down because stakeholders were not properly aligned. So this must be a continuous process. I must make sure that we carry everybody's interest along. There's a human factor in this mm -hmm. that we cannot just push under the carpet and say, I will come and I will solve all the problems. So human beings are very complicated individuals. But mm -hmm. we must keep that conversation going and be stern and determined to make sure that we have a free-moving legal state. So your run, one of your... <clears throat> Selling points running is um, you're being very young, mm -hmm. but I know that you also contested on that your you were in PDP for a very long time. Your vice, your deputy governor candidate was the also PD. in PDP. Yeah. And the what what, what brought you? What, why did you leave PDP? And what do you want to do differently together on that Labour Party? Okay, so um, the PDP was a situation where. It's just something because it's a distraction at this point. Um, I withdrew from the race mm. at the last minute because leaders in the party felt that there could be a potential ticket that was unbeatable. Mm. And I withdrew. I was not happy about withdrawing, but I withdrew because they had agreed that, okay, you guys will make a good pairing. A week later, the flag bearer changed his mind about that, right, and decided on somebody yeah. else. And that's all well and good. This is prerogative, but there are consequences to reaching and reneging on agreements, which mm. you are seeing mm. play out now. So I joined the Labour Party, and I chose the Labour Party because I saw the movement that was coming. You see, the people had started to go past having candidates that just come and dance and crack jokes and say funny things, and, you know, they have the boys or they have money. They were now starting to look at people that have competence, people that have character, people that don't have baggage, and people that have integrity. And I felt that the choice that His Excellency Peter Obi made of choosing Dati, who was not like the typical grassroots politician, but was also an intellectual, highly mm. cerebral, someone that has invested a lot in development in the healthcare sector, in the education sector, was trying to create a brand. And when you start to have a brand, then you start to have an identity. And that then creates ideology. And that is something that I bought into. And that's why I joined the Labour Party. Labour Party, our, view, our vision for it is to create a party that is truly powered by the people. And I won't say middle class, but not middle class in the way we understand it. 
Middle class in the sense of you are educated, you have opinions, you can make decisions with your mind, not your belly. Mm. Right? You are the ones that know all the tweets about how Lagos can be better. You Facebook all day about the complaints and how you can change policy. Get involved. One of the major problems we have across the nation is the need for a mental change. Yes. A perspective. Because many people, yes, governments come with great policies. You must not do this, you must not do that. And it's, it's fantastic on paper. Implementation is totally different because the people are totally, they are used to the way of life of just getting things done or cutting corners or just the corruption. People are used to it. It's like almost like a lifestyle. How does your government plan to change mindsets? Because the truth is that that's a major um, driver for any change. If you, no matter how great your policy is, if the people are not ready for that change, they're not going to move. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think it's very important that I clarify something. You see, the Nigerian that we have today is not what the Nigerian always was. There was a Nigerian that puts in people like Obafemi Awolowo, that experienced Herbert McCall, Inam Diazikiwe. These people were not motivated by the money you were sharing. They were donating. When you talk to people like Paradi Banjo, and he, you talk about the money involved in politics, he, he, he does not understand it. Because it came from a time where people were donating to political campaigns. People were responsible. The military incursion happened. Biafra war happened. Our values were starting to get lost because of the number of people that were displaced in that whole process. Um, anybody that's interested can read about Claude Ake. He did a fantastic treatise on it, um, the, two, the two cities, where it breaks it down very well. But going into it's important to say that because I don't want people to have the sense that Nigerians have always been this way. Nigerians are reflecting leadership, yeah. right? And it, that's how Nigeria is. So for me, my government will be leading by example. I talk about opening up our accounts, and I'm saying it publicly so it can, I can be held to it. We'll open our accounts. We'll publish line-by-line line items, right? Now, when you do this, you've, you've enthroned transparency and accountability. And if I, all of a sudden, don't want to do that anymore, I cannot. Yeah. Because now that system has already been set. Yeah. And then it allows for performance and delivery of projects at a price that is efficient, right? Okay. And then also, going to what you're saying, it's leading by example, ensuring that our... Um, enforcement agencies are also making sure that people face consequences and not consequences that are detrimental where I'll seize your car and sell it. No. Mm. Little, little consequences, right? Now make you start thinking, you know what, I'm going to adjust like my quality of life. So bills, right, that are automated. So if you are going through one way, a bill that is directly linked to your um, license plate, right? You don't have to pay it now, but when you want to renew, you'll pay it, yeah. right? And this will be piling on. We have to wrap up. Let me take a few comments on social media, then we run off. We have run out of time. Go ahead. <laughs> Informer says, information dissemination is key for engagement, enlightenment, and inclusivity. I am listening to, um, it, it, she's tagging you on, on TVC Connect and says that the Lagos State House of Assembly voted against Lagos State autonomy. And um, hold funky JFLEX says, leave, this your guess is a bag, bag of wisdom. Listening to him make me proud to be a Nigerian. His type is supposed to be at the helms <coughs> of affairs in Lagos because he's not only a thinker, but a problem solver. And any other comments on social media? I'm trying to look. I have one here. It said uh, Shego Oyelike says we need to tie party performance to the candidate and glue it with super glue. <laughs> okay, as we wrap up, let me just give you an opportunity to talk to um, the Goshians, um, especially because um, the elections are coming up and um, there are many people at the polls and people are trying to make objective decisions. So what would you say to Nigerians at this time? Why, why should they vote for you in a nutshell? Um, we need to change the narrative of Nigeria. And in doing that, the people must get involved. You can no longer leave politics to just politicians. The people determine and should determine the politician that comes up based on the votes and you participating. A lot of people have gotten to get registered. I know that they might be frustrating you, but make sure you see it through. Power is not given to you like that. You have to take power. And that is your part that you need to play. If you do not get registered, find 10 people that you make sure you are responsible for to ensure that they vote on the day of election. The moment politicians start to see that the people are determining who gets into power, they then become accountable to the people and they serve the people. And that is the trajectory that will allow us to have servant leaders that will move our country forward. So please get involved. Please make sure you vote for people that have competence, integrity, capacity, and the courage to actually make Nigeria and Lagos State a better place Just for you. Just in case you lose, what happens? I'll keep nurturing this new voter demographic because I believe that they are the, they are the custodians of democracy. 
and they need to be the ones that determine who rules us, not people that vote based on their stomach. Well, Thank you so much, Mr. Gbadebo, Roots Vibe. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, you so much. Best of luck. Thank you. So much.